Good evening and welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, the Dearborn School Board of Education. Today is November 9th. It's 7 p.m. Actually, it's a few minutes after 7.05. This is a virtual and an in-person board meeting. I hope everybody's well out there and staying safe. Uh, just for the record, uh, I did uh, get some uh, phone calls after the last meeting. When we are speaking, legally, we can remove the masks because we are a good seven, eight feet away from each other. So just FYI out there. Uh, tonight's meeting is a Zoom meeting. An ID number is 856-2539-8205. I will call this meeting to order. Madam Secretary, can we have a roll call, please? Mary Lane is here. Roxanne McDonald. Is she unmuted? Doesn't show. Here. Sure. Michael Mead. He's waving. <laughs> Trustee Lane, we cannot hear you. Ah, uh, yeah, here. Could she hear uh, us? Trustee Mosin, did there. you tell me something? No, now we can hear you. We we've we weren't, the we weren't hearing you. We weren't trying to do roll call. <laughs> okay. Okay, Adil Mosa, are Here. you there? Yes. Mary Petchlikov. Here. James Thorpe. Go green. <laughs> President Mary. Here, and I don't believe uh, we heard uh, you we, call we out. We couldn't hear anybody. So Mayor Lane obviously is here. Roxanne McDonald. Oh, you didn't hear the first No, we did names. not. I think okay, that's what so Trustee so Moses is trying to tell you. Roxanne McDonald. Here. And uh, Trustee Me, and they have now? to say and if we, I we need their location they're still. from. I'm sorry, yeah. they're oh, in right correct. now physically. That's Both right. Mary Lane and Roxanne McDonough, I believe, are in Dearborn. Trustee Dr. Mead, here. Thank you, sir. Unanimous, Where are everybody's you? here. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Next item, please. Oh, I'm Dr. in Dearborn. Thank you. There you go. Uh, the next item is the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Ms. Amy Modica, Principal of Cotter School, will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Maleko, and community members. Citing the pledge tonight will be a GSRP student from Cotter Early Childhood Center. Please stand and join Sabrine in saying the pledge. Congratulations to the flag in my state of America, to the public, with the staff, and nation, and the guy, and the principal, that is that for all. Hey, thank you. Oh, Good job. You. Thank you again. Can we have the next item, please. The superintendent's update is the next item. Moment of silence. So we've continued to do this because we know um, uh, people that are suffering in the nation, in the state, and in the community. Right now, we're just under um, uh, 8,000 deaths in Michigan and about approximately 238,000 in the U.S. And then we know of people in the local community as well. So let's just take a moment of silence uh, for everyone dealing with this pandemic right now. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to go down the agenda, if that's okay, please, Mr. President. Uh, so going on with agenda items, I have retirements here. Uh, always, um, you know, recognize our retirees. And then we sent, uh, I always send a letter to our retirees. It's been something I've been doing, including letters, send out letters for all staff announcements and can, we'll continue to do that. Uh, Naish Shaheen, over 33 years of service. Enid Check, 20 years of service. Rosalind Massey, uh, over 13 years of service. Janice McGee, over 19 years of service, and Nanette Saad, over 22 years of service. We thank you for your service, and we congratulate you on your retirement. <laughs> on the agenda tonight, and obviously relative to the uh, pandemic and our response uh, that the board has approved in the past, we are again um, 
PPE equipment is on the agenda. And again, we're looking at stockpiling our reserves to make sure that we're ready for when and if we are able to have some in-person instruction. So appreciate the great work that uh, the operations department and purchasing is doing. So I just wanted to point that out, uh, that it is on the agenda today as an agenda item. Under non-agenda items, I just want to point this out. And, uh, you know, I hope that everyone had a wonderful weekend. It was upper 60s, I think maybe 70, 70. today, records. Uh, I do have to do a shout out here. I'm going to take a moment. November 9 is my daughter's birthday, so 17. <laughs> it's actually, Whoa. I know Mason and her son have it as well. So I did prom I did say to my wife I would do that since I'm, miss I'm not with her all day. <laughs> so feel the need to do that. Happy birthday to her. Proud of her. Uh, wonderful daughter. And so I know she's having a good day. And she's going to get sushi this evening. So she likes sushi. So she so I'm the only one that will eat it with her. My son and my wife will not. <laughs> so I'm she's going to bring some for me, she told me. So anyway, the other thing is I hope you had a great weekend. And, um, you know, this time last year, I'll just remind some people, it was actually the only board meeting since I've been superintendent that I missed. I happened to be going to Washington for the Blue Ribbon School and the National Superintendent Award. And I know, uh, Trustee Petlichkoff, you'll remember it clearly because you were the board president at the time. I was stuck on the runway in a snowstorm. Uh, we were all here. School was canceled this day last year. Um, and the board still operated, but just to kind of put it in perspective of Michigan weather, look at where we are, we're at today. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. And, and again, you know, with the positive weekend, and I saw a lot of people outside, and it was so nice to see that. We all need that. And so it was just kind of a, a little situation that I think was a positive, and hopefully everyone got some exercise and activity and spent time with their family and friends, of course, following the rules. Um, so moving down the line, I, I am going to um, go over to the, um, to the uh, computer for this because I do want to mention something on our, um, our COVID uh, data that the board approved. And I know Mr. Mustinen has this up for me. I thought it best to just show it right on the screen. Um, this is what the board approved as far as the data. It's all on our website as far as the COVID metrics. And I just thought it'd be great to do so that the, oops, so that the, uh, the public can see as well. This is our homepage. So if you go down to the homepage, um, and I know that uh, Ms. Uh, Candace and Ms. Khan showed some of it last time, but we didn't have our metrics approved, and we do now. So I wanted to point that out. And so you click on the link and you go down and here is every week we update this. So it's a weekly update with the cases within the district. We were doing it prior to the state legislation and we're gonna to continue to do that and continue to be transparent. But I wanna mention a couple of metrics that I think are important. So one is the Wayne County Weekly uh, Report. And so if you wanna see the two metrics that the board approved, um, one does have multiple measures, but I'm gonna to go to the first one, which is the positivity rate. So if you click on this, this is a report we get on a weekly basis. And the reason we get it on, we were looking for reliable, consistent data. So we're not going for the daily rates. We're looking at a seven day trend. And what the board said was that, um, and it was based on our recommendation, was that we would need at least two weeks of clean data under 5%. Well, last week, as we can see, this is the highest positivity rate we've had since the start of the pandemic in Wayne County. So again, just pointing out where it's at, we're hoping we're gonna continue and the rates are gonna go down, but I wanted to mention. So that's the weekly seven day. It is from uh, Saturday to, or excuse me, from Sunday to Saturday. And it generally, it comes to us on the Tuesday and it hits the public on the Thursday, Friday. So it's not instantaneous, it takes a few days. But again, we're looking at reliable data. We don't wanna make a decision to start instruction, stop based on daily rates. It wouldn't be the responsible thing to do. So I wanted to point that out. The other thing that I want to point out, and this came out from the county, the Wayne County Health Department, is the matrix. This is the matrix that I'm pointing at here that is part of the uh, state um, requirements from the Michigan Department of um, Health and Human Services, which is required. And so the county has to come up with a recommendation. Ultimately, it is the board's decision. So as of 11-3, you can see the last, uh, and this has been now two terms of the uh, data that's come out. And again, this is based now on two weeks of data. So this is the Wayne County community spread levels. And what that consists of is three data sets. It consists of the Wayne County positivity rate. It is the Dearborn community infection rate over a 15 day period. And then it's the trend data in Dearborn over four weeks. So they use that and they come up with a calculation of your risk level. 
Right now, Dearborn is in the highest risk level E. Um, as you can see, most districts in the county are, and I believe you know if you had that, it would be in the state. So I wanted to come out here, be transparent, show everyone. Now the board did say that the soonest we could uh, come out with the uh, in-person instruction and the approved plan was that if we were at risk level D at a minimum and that we had below the 5%. So some may say you have the Wayne County positivity rate over here and you have it in the other measure. Well, what, the reason we have it in both is because if you only had it in the one measure with the matrix, the weighting of it, the positivity becomes a higher weighted measure. And so it, it, statistically, it's a sound measure to use along with the Wayne County matrix. So then what you would do is you would say you're an E, and right now you can see these would be the recommendations. So I want to compliment the board because the board has been very responsible. The board has engaged me throughout the pandemic, and you've made tough decisions with the pressure of the comments that come up. But yet if we see what's going on and we see also the positive cases that have happened among staff, um, we, you know, there would be some concern if we had our buildings fully occupied right now. So we've taken the health and safety. Of course, we want in-person instruction. But again, I want to compliment the board because it's a tough decision. I know there's a lot of pressure. I see the emails. But you did make that decision. And right now, the data is such that we can't. Now, of course, we want in-person instruction. And we hope to get there. And so that's why we're going to uh, continue to promote um, you know, safety measures, wearing the masks, all the safeguards that we can do. We need the community to do it. We saw a spike a little bit after Halloween, and we hope we won't get one after Thanksgiving. So I'm going to go back over there, but I did think it was responsible to show this something to the public right now. And Dave, will, will you wipe the... Okay, thank you. So with that, I also want to mention that tonight we don't have an action item for the uh, affirmation of instruction. Although the board did give uh, metrics and authority to come back, we still have to, every 30 days, by state law, reaffirm. So that would be at the next meeting because we did it at the last study session. So November 23rd, we have a study session. I talked to the board president, and so that would be where we would you know, make that official vote um, on uh, a potential, the form of instruction. Now, every week, obviously, that the data shows that we can't come back, that pushes our potential start date back. Uh, mentioning as well that once we do see clean data where we think we can come back to school, uh, you've given me the authority to make the decision, but it wouldn't be like tomorrow we're starting. We need a two-week window to get everything, you know, planned and, and ready to, to go, so. Just a question. What sure. we approved at the last study session, is not a plan moving forward? Do we still have to... You, yes, you, it, it is. So even though you approved that we wouldn't start um, until the semester was secondary, we still have to reaffirm that because of the 30-day rule by the state law. Okay. And because we voted at two weeks ago, we have to vote again on the 23rd, or if we so chose... Well, that's what I was getting at. Uh, yeah. Trustee Petchkoff and I was speaking for the meeting. Uh, do you feel that there's anything else you need to report on at the next at the study session? What would be the theme? Is that the only reason we're coming in? Because we can see oh, where the numbers are. Oh, I see what you're now. saying. Okay. We had yeah. planned it, thinking that you know our students would be in the would be in the classroom by now, but obviously the reports you just went through, you know, for obvious reasons they are not. Oh. So I personally do not, given the, the the data that we're seeing right now. So if the board, the pleasure of the board was to make a motion tonight. tonight then you could yes. make that decision because um that would then bring us to december which right now the data um by n my numbers um with the, the coming out today i believe that puts us into it the soonest would be the ear early december um, i think, yeah, no. I think uh, you know if i don't want to bring everybody back for a november 23rd meeting if we really don't have a need for it and we know we can see the trend right now and where it's going two weeks from now i don't think we're going to have much well, i think trustee so, thorpe so has a put a motion on the table well first i'm oh, sorry trustee thorpe the finance committee might want to have a closed oh. session on the 23rd uh for um i think uh policy board policy 7240 would be what we'd be using Yes, and I have to check. That's the other thing. I have to check with Tom Wall if he would need that meeting for something. So we, we may still we have may still items. Have yeah, I'm items okay leaving them alone. I would yeah. just uh, trust we, we were just saying if there was no need for a meeting, not to have sure. get, bring people in if we wanted to vote tonight because we can see in two weeks it would probably, the numbers are, are yeah. not going to be any different right. to... Uh, 
Did you set a Did, time for that uh, call session yet or no? We were just talking about it. We weren't sure what was going to be happening at the November 23rd meeting. Well, and if it, if it was going to go late like the last one where we would just cancel the, the closed session to roll it to another time. But I would think that we'd want to have And the audit it. was us. Yeah, and we also Excuse have audit me. results. That, the audit results also, because uh, officially we have to have the audit results approved by December 1st. That's fine. Don't, yeah. Why don't we go ahead and just leave everything alone for now? Okay. Sorry to interrupt. See what you yep. got to me. Go ahead. Okay. Dr. Malik, continue, Thank you. Please. So um, I appreciate, though, the, the conversation on that. And again, open meetings, as we talked about last time, and that's why we have to have these here. Right. So uh, we do have a little video, even though we haven't started. Um, you know, we want to show our responsibility of cleaning. Last time you saw a video that Mr. Andrews put together on cleaning, and now we have one on uh, bus and what we're doing on the bus routes. I will say I was a little jealous that I didn't get a spot on that bus. Maybe I can get one in the future, Mr. Mustonen, but <laughs> I, him and Mr. Leacher seem to have the monopoly on that bus, so I don't know, but we'll see. Can't be that hard to put yeah. your face in that yeah. window. <laughs> <laughs> There's two spots. Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by and visiting with us today. I'm David Musson and Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools. Joining me, our Supervisor of Safety and Security, Mr. John Leacher. John, thanks for your Taking a few minutes. Thanks for having me, Dave. Pleasure. So, you know, John, uh, we all want our kids to get back into the classroom, get back into schools, but it has to be a slow process, a safe process, and a cautious process. And there have been dozens, dozens of people behind the scenes who've been putting together all kinds of safety protocols and procedures, and I know you've been part of all of that as well. Absolutely. We want to make sure that our kids come back in as safe a manner as possible. So today, John and I are going to kind of walk through some of those things that our committees have been working on and developing. Believe me, it's not just us. It's, it's like I said, dozens of people who have been working on these. We just got picked as the two who right. get to <laughs> tell everybody about it. Sure. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how it's going to look when we kind of approach a bus and, and, and when students get on a bus. Now, it would be handy if we had a bus around. Well, David, I believe we have a bus right here. Oh, how convenient. Here we have a bus, and I think actually... Oh, yes, we have, we have a driver and a bus attendant on this bus with us. How convenient. Boy, that worked out really well. <laughs> worked out great. All right, well, let's wander onto the bus and, and get an overview of how things are gonna look. First off, before we get on our bus, this is gonna be mandatory for all students who get on the bus. Have to have your mask. Absolutely. Our drivers and bus attendants will be wearing masks. And we also ask if parents are helping students get on the bus or are approaching the bus, parents, please wear your mask too. Because that way, our bus drivers and attendants who see dozens of people every day have that one extra layer of precaution. So let's all mask up. You know, Dave, the first thing that our students are gonna to have to do when they get on the bus is they're gonna to have to hit that hand sanitizer and make sure that they get their hands as clean as possible. That's great, good way to get things started. Another great way to get things started is with the smiling faces of our bus drivers. We just happen to have Brenda here, one of our awesome bus drivers. Brenda, how are things gonna look when students get on the bus? Well, the first thing is they approach the bus, we're gonna make sure they have a mask on. We do have spare masks that we can give to them if they forgot one or and then they're gonna, we're gonna point out the hand sanitizer there that they can also use. And then we're gonna take their temperature. Am I safe? You're safe. Okay, great. John, I see you've made your way to the back of the bus. Let's talk a little bit about how these kids are gonna be spaced out when they get on the bus. Here we are, we made our way to the back of the bus. And tell me a little bit about how are we gonna space these kids out when they're riding the bus? Well, Dave, uh, while we're transporting fewer students, it'll be very easy to seat them six feet apart and maintain that social distancing throughout the entire bus transport. 
Uh, when we get to fuller buses and more students on the bus, we will seat two to a seat as opposed to the normal three. And then of course, wherever possible, we will socially distance on the buses as well. Um, I think it's a good point to note as well that uh, to keep air circulation and airflow as fresh and as, as, as circulating as much as possible, um, we will be lowering the windows and opening the hatches um, as well, long as the weather permits to make sure, make sure we get as much fresh air in the bus as possible. Great, that sounds like a good plan. What about cleaning? You know, we're gonna have kids on and off touching a lot of things. Are we gonna be able to keep these buses clean? We will, Dave, and I'm glad you asked me that question because <laughs> joining Brenda today with us is one of our awesome bus aides, Tiffany, and I'm gonna let her talk to you a little bit about how we're gonna clean the buses. Great. Tiffany, thank you so much for being here and joining us. So talk to me a little bit. Tell me about how this works with the cleaning and the wiping. Well, before we leave for our routes, we do disinfect the whole bus. And then as soon as we drop off the kids on each route, we do disinfect the bus again, wherever the touch points are, handrails, seat belts, everything. We use a disinfect and wipe. And at the end of the day, we do another disinfect and wipe down the whole bus. Perfect, sounds like a great plan. And there are two of you on every bus, right? A driver and attendant? Yes. So that helps with kind of keeping an eye on the kids, making sure they're social distancing, right. keeping their mask on? Yes, definitely. Awesome job, Tiffany. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. So Dave, as you can see, the committee has put together a really, really good plan to make sure that our kids are as safe as possible when riding the school buses. You know, as they get on, we're gonna hit the hand sanitizer, get those hands good and clean. Everybody's gonna be required to wear a mask. If they don't have a mask, we have masks available to them. Our, our bus drivers and our, our aides are wiping down all those surfaces between runs, making sure our kids are staying socially distanced. And then of course, when we have the opportunity to, and weather permitting, we're gonna increase airflow through that bus by uh, keeping windows down and keeping those hatches open. So I think it's a pretty good plan. Sounds like uh, the committee worked hard in putting together all those details. One last thing, what if a kid were to get sick during the school day uh, and that student couldn't ride the bus home? Oh, that's a great question, Dave. And um, you know, the transportation department and the school, the principal, they're gonna work with families to make sure that any child that would uh, unfortunately or, or come down with symptoms, have symptoms throughout the day, uh, we're gonna make sure that those, those kids get home safe, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about being flexible and, and patient. For sure. Well, I want to once again thank our awesome driver, Brenda, and awesome bus aide, Tiffany, for helping us out today. They gave some great information. And John, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. All right. Until we get around again to another little bit of safety information and news about how we are slowly and cautiously reopening our schools. Thank you, uh, David and John and um, Eric and Jacob for putting that together. So we'll have more of those videos. I'm just gonna move along. I have two, two other things here. Uh, the election, sp specific to the um, school board election. Uh, I wanna first thank all of the candidates that ran for school board office. We appreciate your willingness to serve the community. Uh, myself and President Cavaluna, we always do informational meetings and we had some very positive meetings and interaction and we know that those individuals will uh, stay involved regardless of whether they won. Uh, having said that, I wanna congratulate um, Trustee um, Mozip, Trustee Petlichkoff, uh, Trustee uh, D'Ambrosio and Trustee Watts. These are unofficial, so we wanna say they're not certified, but um, they were elected to the um, to the office for the school board. Um, trustee, um, I'll just kind of mention, Trustee Mosip, who is coming into the sixth year, um, would actually be leaving immediately for a short period once it is certified, and then Trustee-elect Ambrosio would come in, that's per state law, and um, then he would come back in January because he's now gonna be serving a six-year term. So uh, if we can just show our appreciation to all candidates and to those who um, you know, we're part of the election. Congratulations. <laughs> Look forward to working with the new board as we get settled. And of course, we have to wait for the official certification uh, coming from the county. So again, I just want to preface these are unofficial results. Myself and President um, 
uh, Cavaluna at the College of Inn and Communication, along with uh, uh, Chair and President Trustee Beery. I know over at the college, your chair, and here your president title. So uh, about getting that information out. I also want to mention with the election, uh, we know it was you know major ballot, but we also had something that is important to the school district. Um, although we didn't take a position on it, uh, the Wayne County Enhancement Millage was passed by a pretty uh, large majority. Again, unofficial uh, until the, the county certifies it. That does extend the millage uh, from 2022 to 2027. Uh, that's a huge positive for our, our district and the county uh, because of the situation with the pandemic and the budget. So that gives us some sense of security. I believe it's, it's two mills, so which is about $2 per thousand of taxable value. Uh, it equates, and I'm gonna give an estimate because every year it changes. There's a formula based on your student count and, uh, it, it's approximately $7 million for our district. Um, so that is approximately so uh, per year to our budget. So that is obviously important um, to our district. And that is all I have for superintendent updates. Thank you, sir. I'd like to make one comment about the election. Trustee Lane, please. Um, I'm so proud of Miller School. I think it was a fourth grade at Miller School that our new vice president elect Kamala Harris visited, I think it was a year ago in the fall. Uh, they comported themselves very well. She was impressed with Miller School. And uh, I'm just so grateful that uh, we have someone coming uh, in who's going to be, uh, she talked about her own um, platform and, and how she was um, stressing education. I'm really excited about that, that I hope that there will be newfound um, in, uh, reinvigoration of education and support for education that it deserves. It's one of the most important things that we ever do in our life is to pass off the uh, the knowledge, the civilization, the culture that we have to our young people to carry it forward into the future. So I'm just so thrilled to have a woman who will be in the White House as a vice president. I really did not know if I would see this in my lifetime, but I'm sure that uh, there are many other women and many other South Asians, many other African Americans who are as thrilled as I am. I just can't let the moment go by without saying I'm overwhelmed and I'm really happy. Thank you. Anybody else? Dr. Mead? Uh, and don't forget that uh, Jill Biden is a community college teacher. Mm -hmm. So that uh, hopefully be with those two in positions of influence that we will have a new era of people paying attention to public education. Thank you, Dr. Mead. I, I also saw Dr. Biden and I, I should have mentioned that because that I'm thrilled with as well. So yeah, thank you. Actually, she already made a statement that she um, she's gonna continue working and that she is hoping to um, advocate for community, free community college for all, so. That would we already see that there's going to be a transition in philosophy. Thank you, Trustee Moser. Yeah, I'd like to also thank the voters for coming out in record numbers and making their voice heard. I'm honored to continue serving this district, and I look forward for the next six years on the board. Um, one thing that I'd like to also commend are other candidates who gave it their all with their own ideas and with their own opinions. So thank you to everybody who put through their name on the ballot and gave it all on their campaigns. Um, one thing from the video, and I'm sorry for going out of order, but I, I'd just like to thank all of the non-instructional staff, supporting staff, and the custodians who are keeping our schools clean, um, and uh, obviously di going beyond to disinfect our schools um, every single day. So I'd like to give them a shout out because I think we, we, we thank the teachers enough and they can't be, we, 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 we thank them enough, but uh, I think we sometimes lose on the support staff and the custodians and they're doing phenomenal job. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Madam Sec, Trustee McDonald. 
Yeah, regarding the, the video, I just had a couple of things that I think should be clarified. And I know we've discussed it before, um, but I think uh, for parents' sake, if they're watching this, um, just wanted to know uh, the procedure if a child shows a temperature before getting on the bus, what that procedure would be. And also uh, my question is, um, would it be more efficient and more effective to use I forget what it's called, but the the um, disinfectant machines, fogger spray machines. Good, good questions. Uh, if if a child isn't, um, if a child is sick and is getting on the bus and reads the temperature, um, I just want to clarify because that's a great question. Right now, this is during the learning labs, and right now the parents are bringing the students to the buses with their learning labs. We'd have to revisit what, what the temperature reading if we go back to uh, general ed transportation. And then the other reason why we can't use the sprayers, the backpack sprayers, is because there's laws about what we can keep and store on a bus for safety if a bus were to get into an accident. Because there's no way for us or an area for us to secure, secure um, a backpack machine like that. Trustee Pitsikoff? Okay, so it was my understanding that we were only go doing temperature checks for the learning labs, but Correct. the general ed, we will we will not, the parents would be asked to fill out, you right. know, say we took it before. Because all I'm thinking is, is if we go back to the general ed population and maybe we've got a group of kids standing on the street corner for 20 minutes in uh, 30 degree weather, I don't know how accurate that temperature check is going to be anyhow because their foreheads are going to be awfully cold with those sensors. Correct, um, correct. And, so, and right now with the learning Chukov, labs. If I can comment. Also, I, I volunteer at the animal shelter and I stood outside the other day. It was not a particularly cold day, but the coldness on my face miss, uh, caused the temperature gauge to misread. Yeah. So that will be right. a problem. Right. Definitely. Right. That, that would be my first guess is that they would, it would be useless to do for the general population. Anyhow, I wouldn't, right. wouldn't take the time to do it. Um, Pardon so. me, Mr. Andrews. No, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Thorpe? In the video, it talked about wanting to be able to have the windows and hatches open. Uh, and I think it said when possible. Yes. To what temperature would we be considering doing that, just so we could still have the fresh Ooh. air? Always great questions by the board. Put me on the spot. <laughs> to when uh, the bus drivers say no? You know, to answer <laughs> that, um, you know, the buses are equipped with heaters right in the back, right by the wheel well, the real real wheel well. Once it warms up, um, we can do it usually um, down about 30 degrees. Again, a lot of it depends how many windows you're going to have open. In this instant, you don't need to have a lot of windows open. But, you know, typically students like to have the windows open. So we usually fight with the students to, to keep the windows up in the winter time. Thanks. My but we should also ask our students to wear sweatshirts. My kids always wore T-shirts to school because they were too hot. So the students should get accustomed to wearing sweatshirts because they, when they get back in school, they will be in a building that may have windows open. You can always take off uh, if you have a sweatshirt on. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is recognition and acknowledgements, commendations. Good evening, board members, superintendent. Uh, we'll start off with some district commendations. First, uh, commendation to Rosa Aldubele, who participated in a Cognia panel discussion on equity for MDE's annual conference. She was also part of their live webinar on equity, diversity, and inclusion. Ms. Abdul Bailey is the Director of English Learners and Comp Compensatory Education in our district. Accommodations to Maples Elementary uh, Principal Donna Jakubic for participating and presenting during a live presentation with the Michigan Asso uh, Assessment Consortium. Uh, on learning maps and on one of their network events, uh, and this took place in October. Moving on to our high school, accommodations to six Etzel Ford High School students who took uh, first place 
at the Marine Corps Challenge, which was held at Crestwood High School. This was back in October. Uh, the team included Devin Flum, Tyler Berry, Cameron uh, Jawad, uh, Dan Luden, Chris Holt, and Julian Kane. Our fall high school's teams are wrapping up their seasons, uh, so we have many athletes who uh, we'd like to recognize at this time. Commendations to the Etzel Ford boys soccer team uh, who beat Woodhaven to claim the district title. And this was back in October. The Thunderbirds' last district uh, title was in 2000. I don't even want to think that that was 20 years ago. I just, I just don't even want to think about it. Commendations to Forts and Girls Volleyball Team, who claimed the district title on Friday. Commendations to Dearborn High Boys Cross Country Team, which qualified for the state finals for the second year in a row after placing third at the MHSAA Regional Meet. In addition, Charlie Frank was the individual regional champion, and the team is coached by P.J. Maher. Accommodations to the DHS soccer players selected for the KLAA All-Conference, including Hassan Safadi, uh, Yusuf El Malaki, Hassan Saab, Luke Kearns, Peyton Podini, Lucas Blessing, and Sami Masa. And in a, at the elementary school, we want to give commendations to the Maples Arabic drummers who performed outside the school on Tuesday for those coming in for election day. Students have been practicing since August at Ford Woods Park and were coming in to work in small labs and the election day was their first performance in eight months. The names of all those students will be included in the official board minutes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Maliko. Uh, thank you. I'd like, to give a, I'd like to give a commendation if I might. Trustee Lane, please. Uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Sana Ayub and her uh, sixth hour day B AP US history class for allowing me to join them virtually today. And uh, also the Environmental Interpretive Center at University of Michigan Dearborn, who built along with the Stout Middle School staff, built an outdoor uh, learning uh, classroom behind the team meeting room at Stout. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to do some of those. I think Celina is interested in having that and they yeah. visited the Waldorf school. Uh, it would be a really great thing coming out of this pandemic if we can do more outdoor education. Everybody behaves better outdoors and we can learn a lot more about nature and the world around us. Dr. Malik, hold on. Trustee McDonald. Yeah, I just want to give an accommodation too. I just want to give a big kudos, and I'm so proud of the entire Etzel Ford High School team, top to bottom, for receiving the GreatSchools.org 2020 College Success Award. And it just wasn't too many years ago um, that they had the priority school label. And I'm so proud of where they've come. I had problems with them being labeled that to begin with, but um, just kudos to um, Principal Case Bolt and the entire team. They just do such a great job, and I'm proud of the students and all the work that's being done over at Etzel. Okay, now Dr. Malik. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I just want to give a commendation to um, actually our administration. Um, when we look at the virtual learning program, um, also working with the unions on staffing, uh, they did some amazing things this summer. You might recall the virtual program. We opened up applications, and it was a tremendous push on staffing, as we've talked about here. And we opened it up so that teachers could apply. And we had two windows where teachers in August could apply. And we pretty much got all voluntary at the time. Uh, we then did a second window. Again, this was to accommodate the parents and families and appreciate the support of the board. So I do have to kind of, you know, mention the work they were doing. Uh, then we did it again, and now we had a second window that just closed. So again, it's trying to do the right thing in a pandemic, but I see Jane nodding because she's been part of it with HR and the whole administrative team. The principals were here. It is a tremendous amount of work that people put in over the summer, and they've been working ever since. So I want to thank them. Now, with that, I want to go back also to thanking some of our teachers because I'm getting an understanding of the virtual learning program. And I just want to take a moment. I've been going into um, uh, classrooms virtually. And so just quickly, I want to thank Ms. Yoakum, 
um, Ms. Syring, Ms. Alawu, Ms. Shami, Ms. Wolski, and Ms. Laddick. Those are a few that I visited over the last week or two, and they're just doing some amazing things, and I have a better understanding. I plan more visits, by the way, virtually, and I thank them for the great work uh, they're doing. And just to express that, um, I have a teacher here that, and you know, the board gets some, and, and uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, the board and administrators can get, you know, the complaint about this, or you prefer this, or you prefer that, and that's what I want to point it out. But, you know, it's also nice when you get some of the positive. And there was a teacher, and I just want to read this. Um, she's a teacher that is in the virtual learning program. And I've heard similar, so when I'm reading this, understand there's other communications that are coming in or there's conversations I'm having with the teachers. And again, it's very positive. I'm very appreciative. So I just want to mention, this is Ms. Luckow, um, and I'm just going to read this. I want to preface the rest of this email with the fact that I love my home school. So this is a virtual teacher that converted. She's in a, a school. She was over at uh, William Ford, and she's um, now into the virtual program. Um, my staff and the community of families that I have had the privilege to work with over the last 10 years. But I also want to express how I've been feeling about the new adventure I've been on this year. And again, she, she gave me permission to read this too. I had to get permission. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking and reflecting at the close of our first full marking period as a virtual program. If I were to sum up the last few months of my teaching career, I could use one simple word, grateful. Being that you are all at the pro proverbial helm of this virtual ship, I wanted to share my gratitude and thoughts with all of you. I am grateful for the new families I have met. They have welcomed me into their homes and have shown patience, support, dedication to this entire process. They made difficult decisions this year and stood by them. They are present every day. They are communicative, creative, and willing to problem solve. They're in the trenches with me, and it's truly a blessing. Seeing some of their faces tonight reminded me of the fact that we are in this not just for our students, but for our whole community. I have been lucky to be part of 10 different schools this year. Schools from all over our district, and explaining that's because we have students in the virtual that come from all over. Um, the diversity that we have in Dearborn is something to be celebrated. Each building has its own sense of culture and community, and I get to be part of it, well, at least some of it. I think that's pretty amazing. Also, the staff and admin at all buildings have been open and supportive in all of our communication, and that has made things so much easier. My home team has included me and kept me in the loop, and I've been able to maintain valuable communication there. The connection to my home school has been very important to me, and it still feels like home. Again, we had that where we talked about them, still teachers communicating with the home school. But now, in addition, I have another group of teachers I can call my team, my VLP team, the virtual learning team. What a wonderful collection of educators and women who bring a unique perspective, um, and I'm sure there's some men in there, and keep me grounded in this new way of teaching and learning. I have a co-teacher that I love. Christina Randall comes in every day and gives it her all. She's professional, caring, and others, yet another unique perspective, adds another unique perspective to my daily practice. Our daily collaboration has been one of the things that I am most thankful for. She is someone I can trust to provide me with real, authentic feedback. Our time together is productive and uplifting. She is someone who I consider to be both a valued coworker and a friend. I am grateful that this very challenging experience has breathed new life into my teaching. I have been forced out of my comfort zone. I have had to learn a new grade that levels curriculum. And I have had to learn how to effectively utilize multiple new online learning platforms. I'm still learning. I'm sure all the teachers are nodding right now, just as we all are. I have had to learn more in the last few months than I feel like I've ever learned uh, in a long time. It's been hard. It's been a true learning curve. It's been invigorating and rewarding, and I am grateful for all of it. I'm grateful that we're safe. I'm grateful for my 29 amazing fourth graders who show up every day ready to learn, engage, and make a connection. I'm grateful that we have wonderful leadership in this district. While some days are easier than others, I wouldn't trade this experience. So thank you for making this program possible. Thank you for making us all feel like we're part of something big. It feels pretty good to be a BLP teacher. I hope you're all well. Thanks for hearing me out. Again, that's Sarah Lookow, and I think she expressed really what that takes to the entire community. She mentioned parents to students to, you know, appreciate the board support. And so I just felt like, given what we're all going through, and again, it's one example, but these are the stories I'm hearing as I'm going into the classes, and I, I plan to do that a little more, and especially with the virtual program. So thank you. Dr. Maliko, I'm glad you, uh, you read that email. I was going to wait until comments, but I think it's more fitting to uh, make my comment right now. At the last study sessions, we had uh, 
three amazing teachers that addressed us about the learning labs. There was uh, some teachers that are doing the online that thought maybe we thought less of them, which is not true. Uh, we have some amazing work going on online in the virtual learning program. Uh, our teachers have really, really stepped up, so we're very thankful for what they're doing. Obviously, with the leadership of their administrators, their principals, great things are going on in our schools. Uh, like Trustee Moseb uh, mentioned, we'll, we won't forget about non-instructional. Uh, it takes a team, and the Dearborn team is doing an amazing job. So we are very thankful for all the work being done since this pandemic hit us. So I appreciate you reading that, and thank you. Thank you. If, Trustee Petchikoff? Yeah, uh, President Barry, I, I also kind of... Uh, the last few days we've heard about district after district after district returning back to the virtual world. We, because of our caution, were, were um, not put in a position of oh, starting one way and reverting back, and I'm hoping that it actually helps to um, maintain some consistency for our students and our teachers and that we're kind of going to be ahead of the curve in the fact that they've already been in this environment as imperfect as it is, and that everybody is not going to have to relearn a uh, uh, teaching setup, that we, are, that we are going to be able to maintain a steady pace of where we've begun. Uh, unfortunate as it is that this is a situation we've been um, forced to adapt to. But, but I think it's wonderful that we've um, been able to um, support that so that our students to the, and staff um, ha have a place to hold that they can um, keep going forward without interruption of, of their um, learning environment at this point in time, as, like I said, imperfect as it is. Glad you mentioned it, Trustee Petrikoff, because uh, I think from the get-go we said we're going to take things slowly. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a small district, obviously. We have over 20,000 students and you know, thousands of employees. And I'm very proud of this board, the work they've done, the work, the work we've done uh, with the leadership of Dr. Maleko. Uh, it would have, I can't even imagine, I can't imagine open up the school district, a week later have to close down, open up. As soon as we start having this discussion, I would get parents and teachers and everybody else calling and say, this is what they're doing in this district. Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing in this district. And obviously a couple of weeks ago, things were reversed, like you mentioned. People are closing their buildings and going back virtual. Uh, we know Dearborn. We know Dearborn. And uh, we, I truly, truly believe we did what's in the best interest for Dearborn. Not just the students and the, our staff, uh, the community members out there too. So. This, this, I mean, I again, can't even imagine. Yeah, it was a tough decision. Yeah. It wasn't an easy one. I know uh, Dr. Maleko mentioned that the positivity rate for uh, the previous week was 8%. Unfortunately, it's heading towards double digits as we I speak think, right now. I think one I read I was checked the 10, state 10 the last something. four or five yeah. days at the state level and in Wayne County. It's about 10%. Yeah. Hopefully, it starts trending the other way. But, uh, yeah, so okay. very proud of this board. So good work. President Barry, one, yes, sir, one, thing, sorry. one thing I forgot to, and I want to thank the board too for your leadership and that, as I mentioned, um, amazing things. I forgot to mention too, Miss Wozniak, and I can't believe I met, she reached out to me and I went into her kindergarten class. So when you're saying, honestly, I've been in enough, I've been from AP literature to the high school to all over to fourth, the amazing things that are going on in virtual, um, given the fact that we have to implement these things and the attention. So. Uh, it's just fantastic, and it's great to go in there. I know Trustee Lane said she was in a class today, but just to see between kindergarten to fourth grade to fifth grade and see the great things. Now, we also know of the issues like we have here, turning off, you know, the things that you learn with Zoom, turning off. Sometimes you got to turn the camera off because you don't have enough bandwidth and you can't hear what they're saying. But they are all adapting or to, you know, getting into a small group with Miss Siring. Um, you know, just amazing things. They really are stepping up, and I appreciate you guys mentioning all staff, too, because it does take yeah. everyone to do a job. So I want to mention that. I mean, it's teamwork. So just want, I, I'm glad that we can share some positive. Now, hopefully, as a team in the community, we'll come together 
and we'll try to get those those numbers down so we can have some pe more students in school. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Madam yeah, Secretary, next comment. item, please. Oh, I wanted to make a comment just Please quickly do. to jump on your, your comments. Just, uh, I, I'm, I'm well aware, and I'm sure everyone else is, the, the cost that this pandemic has inflicted on all of us. I know that there are lots of parents that are really suffering. I've watched a couple of kids try to be through in classes, and it, it's, it's just like people don't even have any downtime. Uh, it's distorted everyone's sense of time. People are exhausted. I'm well aware of that. I know that upcoming in our public comments, we'll have someone who is going to comment on the lack of learning and, and the, uh, the loss that kids have suffered not being together, not being in school. Uh, and I know though, I, I'm, I'm aware of those things. Everyone's aware of those things. We've lost people. Some of us know people who have died in the pandemic. And I, I want to just say to people who are agonizing because their kids are not in school, that they've, they've lost things. We recognize that. I'm very sorry about that. But I know uh, being in touch with so many educators that they deeply miss their students, their classroom, but they don't want to sacrifice their lives for, for being back not they they can't and they should never be asked to do that so when it's safe we'll all be happy to go back and with the good news that we had today maybe there will be a there will be a vaccine pretty soon we're all lo looking forward to that day so i just wanted to say that no one should be asked to sacrifice too much and i i know there's been too much sacrifice already uh, we're all aware of that and it, it's heartbreaking, but it is what we have. Thank you. Uh, 